Everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal in a soaked in misty morning. Actually, it's foggy. <laughs> I don't know why I said misty. It's foggy. <laughs> really foggy. Like down to one block, sort of foggy. Or maybe not even a block. Uh, it's five degrees here in southern British Columbia, which would make it, I think. About 39, I think it is. Oh, I lied, 41. It's 41 in American. So, on its way up, <laughs> let's hope that it keeps doing that. Although, somehow, I don't think so. I'll believe that uh, in a couple of months. <laughs> but I can be hopeful, right? As I am. I. Hope you all had a wonderful 24 hours since I last spoke to you. Um, the, the, the magical part about this is that all sorts of things happen to us on a daily basis and that's why I try and do these vlogs to try and make sure that you know that they happen to all people, not just to you. And some of the things that happen are to other people are probably a lot worse than things that are happening to you. But not to be negative about it, but just so you know there is hope. <laughs> uh, even though these, these challenges come around. I don't know why my eyes are watering. I'm not crying. Um, I've probably got eye makeup in my eye that I shouldn't have done. And no TV. <laughs> anyway, as I said, not to be negative, uh, but it just is that, you know, we all have stuff happening to us and it's how we deal with them. Uh, I, I've talked about it quite regularly, but it's something called emotional intelligence rather than IQ, it's EQ. And our ability to be able to handle stuff that, that comes down is really what growing up is all about, I think. And I can assure you it took me an awfully long time to grow up. <laughs> and it took me many more years than perhaps it should have been. <laughs> Do any of you relate to that? I was still hoping somebody was going to save me, you know, that the Prince Charming on a white charger was going to come and solve all my problems for me. Or that the daddy that I never had was going to... Yeah, all those things, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, not so much, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> and so, eventually I think you do get a bit of a sense of humor about it and realize uh, maybe it really is up to me. And that's what I think is what is so charming about growing older, <laughs> is that you give up the pretense. In growing older, you actually do believe that. All right, it's, it's me against the world sort of thing. And there's some level of peace in that. And I'm certain the older viewers um, will let you know that it, it's like a switch goes click. And you go, you know, I really don't have to please the world anymore. It's time to just enjoy my life. And I'm pretty certain if you talk to most people, although they probably won't have many regrets. I mean, we've all, well, I don't know, but I would like to suggest that we've all got stuff in our past we'd probably rather forget. But I mean, um, you know, Although we've all got that going on, I don't think many people really regret too much in their life. And what's the point? 
I like to believe that all the bad decisions that I made, and there were some, not too major, but there were some, um, the bad decisions that I made, I believe, were all instrumental in building me into the character building me into the character that I am. Does that make sense? I think all the, you know, I've said this before, that, you know, all the joys we get given, we get given equal pain. Or that is my experience. So I've been, had a life full of lots of joy and did some incredibly um, wonderful things in my time. But I also suffered a lot of pain, emotional pain, and so, you know, it gives you, for a while there, it begets almost to be bipolar, you know, <laughs> how many of you relate to that one? Um, but, you know, if then eventually it starts to settle down. And the reason that I talk about that is because it reminds me a lot about having a dog. I can remember when I first had Bean Bean. He was about a year and a half old. He was absolutely <laughs> almost insane. <laughs> you know, he, he would run around so hard and he would wag his tail so hard that he broke it on the walls. You know what I mean? It was just like, really? <laughs> um, he did everything to the extreme. And so, and then I watched him over the years, you know, as he moved from this insane energizer bunny dog into a moving floor ornament. A hairy moving floor ornament that shed, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months of the year. <laughs> I think I could have really gone into the weaving business with the amount of hair that dog managed to drop. But maybe not quite as much as the dog before him. And so, part of what I really would encourage you all to do is to look at your lives and know if the good times are coming right now, or if the bad times are coming, I think the words, this too shall pass, you know. <laughs> uh, there will be a balancing time. And I think that it's really important to understand that uh, in life, I used to think that these dramatic highs was such fun because you know there used to be and, and then there's a lot to be said for the quieter lifestyle there's a lot to be said for the less stress more reality routine but the, the trick there is to not live your life totally like that because we still need those exciting times but I wonder how many of you have reached that point where you're finding that you know the quieter life is actually the more enjoyable life the the, the solid feet on the ground um, more stable, if you like. Nothing wrong with that. And it sort of makes a whole lot more sense, you know, when you get to this point where you remember that question on so many different um, application forms, whatever. How long have you lived in your house? Well, that will probably tell you a lot about your character right now. 
it might also say a lot about your finances, but what I what I found was that when I was in my twenties I was forever moving. I don't know why, but I was. By the time I got to 30s and 40s, I wasn't moving as much. And now I've been in my house close to 20 years. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it does make sense why they ask that question. It, it says a lot about the uh, maturity level or the, the, the maturity base of the person. So, you know, I've always said as well that, you know, you are the way you drive your car. And I think, uh, you know, as you sort of look through life and your day, just be aware of are you doing things that make life more and more stressful? Or are you doing things to make it less so? Now, let me give you a case in point. I've got to renew my car insurance by Friday. Now, some people would have done it already, I know that. And some people will wait until Friday to do it. Well, I can't do that because I have a, well, I could, but I have a very busy Friday planned. So I intend to do mine after work tonight which is a bit of a pain because it is boring to do. <laughs> I don't know why I find it boring, but I do. You know, you sit around while somebody shuffles bits of paper and you can't actually go away and do something else because they need your signature every now and then. You know what I mean? So you've sort of got to be there while they do their job and you sit there like a banana watching them. Um, yeah, not my idea of a fun way to spend the evening. <laughs> so my question again is, are you the sort of person that leaves things until the absolute last minute or do you give yourselves a little bit of room? And what I would suggest to you is that we we actually decide, for a lot of times, we decide how much stress to put our system under. I was thinking right at that moment about Pat, you know, our viewer that has um, lived her life basically, a, you know, being a foster mum or adoptive mum to to various children and she lives in a, in a community that desperately needs people who can do that and you know I've known Pat long enough now to know that it really is in her heart uh, to do that sort of work and yet you go for those of you who've had children <laughs> You're probably going, yep, the ones I've had were enough. I don't need to be adding any more, sort of thing. And it, you, But, you know, there are others of you that thoroughly enjoyed it all, even the bad times. And I think, again, you know, you look at it, where is it written? that it's a peaceful thing to do, to have children. And I'm pretty certain that some of you, if you had known just how much responsibility um, being a parent really is, uh, you might have reconsidered. Not, I'm pretty darn sure that none of you would not wish to have had your children, don't get me wrong, but you know, it's just like, do we really know what we're letting ourselves in for beforehand? And how many things in our lives do we get into where we really have no idea what we're letting ourselves in for? And yet that's what sort of gives us the 
ability to cope. That's what gives us our character. That's what gives us... I used to say uh, many, many, many years ago, if I'm smart enough to talk my way into this job, I'm smart enough to do it. Do you know what I mean? If I could get through the interview and get offered a job, uh, I was pretty sure that I could do it. Now, that doesn't mean that I lied my way through it. That's not true. But, you know, there are things that you can talk about where you actually don't have any experience in whatever it is that they want, but you have comparable experience. You have experience in other areas that are, sim that are similar in some way. And so that's what I'm saying, that you know, if, if I can talk my way through it and get the job, then I undoubtedly can do the job. It just means I've got to adapt really fast and learn, very high um, learning curve on stuff. And so I used to be able to talk myself into quite a few things in those days. I think I, I, it would be fair to say I was quite a good interview. I, I Actually, most times I didn't even have to interview. People would come and headhunt me, <laughs> which was quite flattering. Considering I didn't have a piece of paper on me that said I was smart, you know. Oh, actually, I do. But, you know, I didn't have what I call major paper on me that said I was a smart person. So, I look at my life and go, I now realize, as I sort of look back, that a lot of the stress that I had in my life was self-inflicted. And... As I said time and time again, there's only one thing that really causes me um, stress as people, not doing things my way. Um, but, you know, I also realized that a lot of my stress was being around the wrong sort of people. And that is really... very sad. In a couple of weeks I'm going to a friend's 65th birthday party and I think it's really cute. He's invited 65 friends to dinner at a restaurant. And what a really fun thing to do. Now the joke is, these 65 friends, I'm probably the single, um, but these 65 friends, we've all been meeting up for as long as I've known him. And it's really strange because he surrounded himself by, uh, with these incredible people and every time, you know, he has a party to celebrate Christmas or birthday or whatever you know we all meet up and it was <laughs> just like we all saw each other last week because we just pick up from the last social event that we all were there together and they're all very creative people um, I think that's the one thing that's in common with them all um, they're, they're s very creative people some are very funny, some are quite serious, some are quite complex. But they're all lifelong friends. And the reason I know that is because <laughs> we, we all keep meeting up. <laughs> And I think that makes life very cute. It makes life really awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be doing that in a couple of weeks. So have a look at your life and your day and have a look at uh, exactly how much you create the environment in which you live. 
whether that's stressful or not stressful, whether that is, whether you encourage drama in your life or whether you intentionally walk away from drama. Now don't get me wrong, we all have things happen that are pretty dramatic. But as I said, how you cope with them is the trick. How is your emotional intelligence? <laughs> and if you're human, <laughs> which you probably are, <laughs> you're probably thinking, depends what day it is. So. <laughs> And I totally relate to that. Some day, days my emotional intelligence is actually quite good. And then there are the other days, which we won't discuss right now. This is Tim Mama Cell saying, remember to look after one another, but most of all, remember to look after yourself. Bye-bye for now.